Okay. And this will now be the DSA buff that was going to happen in Menzies 9. Um, in, in Menzies 13. Sorry. I'm a bit dis <laughs> disoriented. Okay. So, uh, yes, fire away. <laughs> Welcome to the BOF. Uh, this is intended to be a BOF, so we'll do a short presentation at the beginning to talk about the team and the changes in the team membership and what we've done over the last year and what we're doing in the coming year. Uh, and then we'll turn it over to the BOF and we can answer your questions and receive your comments and suggestions. Uh, and I'll introduce my co-panelists in a moment when I go through the uh, team composition. So I just briefly went through the agenda. Uh, if you don't know who we are and what we do, we have a delegation from the DPL uh, to do these five things, paraphrased from the actual delegation text. We maintain the user database, we maintain the Debian infrastructure, we run a bunch of the core uh, Debian services around authentication, authorization, email, and some other things. Uh, we coordinate with our hosting partners uh, and our service partners. So an example is UBC, where I work, or Fastly, where Talef works, used to work. Um, and of course, we work with you to deliver the services that you want to have on Debian.org infrastructure. So this is who we were. And uh, I don't know if he's in the room. Uh, Faden stepped down recently. So I'd like to thank him for his service to DSA. Oops. And Aurelian joined us. So we suckered another guy in. And uh, he's been working hard uh, on our stuff. So with me up here are Tolef, Martin, Hector, Julian, and Paul's hiding. <laughs> Peter can't be here because he's defending his thesis this week. So soon he'll be uh, Dr. Peter Palfreder. So looking back, the things that we've been up to, uh, we've been on a bit of an M&A uh, kick. So Bedell would like that, I think. Uh, we've been trying to merge the DebCon infrastructure in. It's been it's slow going, uh, so we'd like to ramp that up a bit. Uh, but uh, some of that has already occurred. And we have merged the Debian ports infrastructure in. So we've let go of some legacy things like lida.debian.net. And of course, we have our ongoing, every year we refresh our five-year plan. And uh, we're in year one of our latest five-year plan. So uh, over the last year, we refreshed the security mirrors, and uh, hardware has been received to refresh the FTP master, although the function hasn't been moved from the old machine to the new machine yet. So would really like to thank HPE for that uh, generous donation in the last year. Uh, Build the porter box in. We received more machines for PowerPC ARM and for MIPS. A bunch of that has been deployed. It's some of the critical infrastructure necessary for those ports to be available uh, or releasable. And from the service management perspective, really, there's only two major ones that we want to call out uh, in our slide deck, and that's the transition of the majority of our certificates from Gandhi to Let's Encrypt. Uh, Gandhi has been a great partner to us and to open source projects in general, so we should thank them uh, for that. Um, but of course, we're big supporters of Let's Encrypt, and so we've moved uh, all of our expiring certificates over to Let's Encrypt, and we'll finish the rest of them off. And uh, Paul primarily with uh, Lucas, or Lucas with Paul, whichever direction is more appropriate in terms of the load of work, um, uh, worked on the service guidelines that are available in the wiki, and we'll go through a little bit of that here, since there seems to be some confusion about why things should or should not be on Debian.org. So moving forward, uh, on the mergers and acquisitions piece, we're still interested in completing the DebConf work, uh, the wiki, the mailing lists, uh, et cetera. Um, and it, given the various mail threads that have occurred, it would be interesting to work with service proponents on replacements for Alioth. So people talked about GitLab. I talked a little bit about why are we doing both GitLab and Git, not in the sense that they're competing services, but why are we doing multiple things of the same flavor? Uh, it would be interesting to try to get a group of people together who are interested in uh, continuous integration, source code management, et cetera, to have this uh, as being a, uh, a new service that replaces Alia. Infrastructure refresh. Uh, HPE will be donating a very large amount of hardware that will be hosted at UBC. We call it the ByteMark equivalent. Um, 
so it'll include an enclosure, uh, some number of blades, and a lot of storage. And the intent is so that we can have redundant services at either ByteMark or at UBC, and not to be uh, have a single point of failure with with either one of the or hosting organizations or the other. Uh, our next uh, big ticket item for which we do not yet have sponsorship, uh, so we might buy it with Debian funds, will be CD Image. Uh, it's a huge memory machine with large and fast storage. Uh, after that, we uh, might consider doing FTP master and CD image again, meaning that both of those machines are enormously expensive and large, but also single points of failure. So um, FTP master is more critical, of course, but he, having a second CD image means that we could build the numerous CDs in half the time. And finally, we're interested in supporting the build the porter effort, of course, and so um, some more ARM, some more MIPS. We can talk about uh, why we need even more and some of the new stuff, for example, the Spark 64 potential donation from Oracle. And uh, from a management perspective, we're working with a console server uh, supplier uh, soon to be announced that um, uh, will be helping us get a consistent set of hardware for remote management across our various data centers so that we don't have to deal with different console servers. Um, the next step of this, of course, would be you know consistent power management, consistent UPSs if we had those, et cetera, et cetera. But all of this to try to lessen the uh, burden on us in terms of, oh, right, at that location, I have to dance on this foot and tap my head this way in order to get to the, to the console. Um, Finally, services, we continue to work on user LDAP. I haven't done any of that in the last year. Paul found a couple of people to help out. And in the DebConf vein, uh, we continue to do some of the video processing uh, infrastructure. And some of it is not as ideal as we would have wanted it. So we're looking at uh, ensuring that this uh, can be processed quickly and can be stored quickly. Okay, so that's our last year and our year going forward. Um, this is a bulleted list from the long text that is in the service requirements on the wiki. Um, really, the key points here are, from a DSA perspective, the earlier you engage us in your proposed service design, and the more effort you put into having a private and secure service offering that is architected well, and even if it needs to use new software, that software you put the energy into making backported packages, then the more prepared we are to run it on Debian org infrastructure. So we need three, three or four things really. Um, we need a team to be in place. It can't be a single individual. Um, it needs to be using back, at least stay backported, if not stable packages, because we want to um, drink our own Kool-Aid effectively. Uh, we want the architecture to be recogni to recognize privacy and security. So for example, we don't keep Apache logs, or we anonymize Apache logs, so we're quite interested in making sure that users of our services have their privacy protected. So if your service isn't architected that way, that becomes a, a stumbling block potentially. And you need to understand what your service requirements and articulate them early, because we don't have an infinite amount to sitting around. We are getting a lot of gear from HPE, it's true, uh, and that will now make a bunch of uh, um, hardware available, uh, but you know it can kind of goes like this in terms of feast or famine as to what's available at any point in time. So we, when I open it for Q&A, we can go back to the service requirements. Port requirements, there are some people who um, are a little bit confused about uh, when I write an email that says uh, we have some concerns as to whether or not that's a blocking concern. No, it's most of the concerns that we've expressed in the emails recently are non-blocking concerns. But there is, you know, there is a red, yellow, green set of flags for release architectures on purpose. So red is certainly a blocking concern. We have yellow concerns, non-blocking concerns, things that should be rectified if we want to meet our objectives for uh, build the hardware. So really they amount to independence from any particular vendor, independence from any particular hosting provider, uh, hardware under our control, hardware that is available or under hard uh, warranty support or post-warranty support. The idea being that um, we shouldn't be dependent on a single provider of equipment or a single hoster of that particular equipment uh, because if they go away, if the relationship breaks down, a fire occurs, which has happened, 
um, then we don't have a way of supporting that architecture. So we, we apply that principle to all the services we run in Debian.org, hence the byte mark equivalent, and we are attempting to apply that principle to all the porter and buildy boxes. And so from a port status perspective, this was gone over a little bit in the release uh, um, discussion earlier, uh, but with a finer DSA perspective, we don't have any issues with AMD or i386. We have some uh, issues with KFreeBSD in terms of how the security archive works there, and that should either fold into the regular stuff or move to ports. ARM64, ARML, and ARMHF, we have some non-blocking issues, uh, and all of them are improving, fortunately. Uh, the number of machines that still require local support has reduced significantly. Um, we have uh, fewer machines that are on development boards and more on some production quality boards. Um, we have insufficient hardware, and that might be a strange statement. What I mean by that is all the hardware is hosted at um, uh, with vendors. Um, uh, so that's the second, the next moment, insufficient hosting locations. Most of it is with two vendors. So um, if the relationships are with those vendors, then we're still in the same bucket. It would be nice to have some of these boards uh, at other locations that aren't vendor controlled. So this isn't to imply that we have a poor relationship with these vendors. This is me wearing a very, I'd like to be independent of, uh, of any particular failure point hat. Um, and that's why I'm in, I, we continue to say that these are non-blocking issues. Um, because the vendors that are providing us with ARM hardware have been great. Uh, MIPS, MIPSL, MIPSL 64EL, uh, again, some non-blocking issues. They are improving. Primarily, the aging and buggy hardware that was at UBC has been replaced uh, and is online now uh, and includes FPUs. So uh, their ability to build packages is significantly increased. PowerPC and PPC 64EL, some non-blocking again, insufficient hardware and hosting locations. And S390, same thing completely reliant on sponsored hardware. Now, for PowerPC, uh, IBM has been great as well, and we might get some more hardware there and find a new home for it. S390, we will never buy an S390. So there's no way to, un, you know, to turn the S390 yellow flag into a green flag short of uh, a lot of money. So this is how to contact us. Uh, you can send us an email in private. It just goes to the team members. Or you can send it to us in public at Debian Admin. It's not archived, but there are other people on uh, Debian Admin. Uh, request Tracker. Uh, you can submit tickets for service at Request Tracker. Or you can come and chat with us in the Debian Admin channel on irc.ftc.net. I didn't put debian.org uh, there because uh, I think there's an SSL cert issue for the SANS. Uh, and finally, these uh, are some references that you can uh, go to to learn more about DSA or uh, the service hosting. I didn't put up the, uh, the ports. And that's it for our quick uh, presentation because it's meant to be a boff and I'd like to open up the floor to questions, answers, and comments. Okay. This is going to be a short boff. Okay. <laughs> Hi. So I want to go back to the requirements for services. So you said you want um, to dog food our stuff. So you want to have things from stable and backport, but there's a loophole there because you don't want the service itself coming from the archive, right? Because in that case, I need root. The service admin needs root to be able to upgrade. That's correct. We generally prefer people. You should have a mic. It should actually be, yeah. Uh, we actually prefer people to, at, at least for self-developed services, that they come out of the whatever the service provider is using, rather than uh, use. Is it okay now? No. Okay. Um, no, it's not. It might. Should I? Okay. Yeah, it should be better now. Uh, no, it, you're right. Uh, to, uh, for anything we write ourselves, or you know, any we as in Debian write ourselves, we prefer it to come out of uh, whatever Git or whatever version control system they use, uh, because the iteration cycle for going through the entire archive is slow. Uh, but any dependencies in you know Python modules or whatever, we really prefer that to come out of, of the archive.
Hello? We're here to be beaten up by you, so let, uh, let the beatings begin. <coughs> Uh, sure, it's uh, only opinions at this point. So, uh, he asked if I could speak a little bit more about GitLab. Or any code yeah, it, I don't have a preference of one over the other. My my chief concern is that I don't want to get into the same position we are today with Alioth. So we have something that is labeled Debian.org that isn't managed by us and effectively has a single. Uh, service owner at this point and if that person were to choose to stop doing that service from our perspective it's something that we would want to shut down we really do need teams to run services so that there is uh, some health behind the service ownership and it can tolerate people coming and going as their interests wax and wane so um, uh, any suggestion that we stand up a GitLab for me seems like a great opportunity for people to get together to talk about how to transition uh, Alioth out. That could take years, but let's start the conversation about how we get people off Alioth and onto GitLab if GitLab is the one that we choose to go forward, forward with. And I recognize that GitLab doesn't do all the things that Alioth does, so, but that's part of the conversation is what are the things that Alioth does that can go away, and what are the things that can't go away that we need some replaced with GitLab or add-ons to GitLabs or complements to GitLab? Yeah. What one of the things that uh, GitLab doesn't give you is mailing lists. Do you think it would be possible to use the main Debian infrastructure for mailing lists instead of? Um, with the respect to that. I'm still having the list master's head on. Yes, file bugs against list Debian org. Um, the in the past, um, uh, Alex Wirt, who is doing most of list master nowadays, uh, is quite open to and quite fast on opening lists. Um, maybe we find a different way. That in 2005 or 2006, I think there was the approach of having Teams Debian Net or Teams Debian Org, which more or less vanished. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Uh, there, there, there was a proposal to, to move that into, uh, into Lists Debian Org, but the software is mostly not used anymore, only by few, very few small teams. So maybe, yes, we, we could talk to list master and see that we get even more list master because lists is also currently a run only by effectively one active person and yeah that said it, w it would be really nice to actually have uh, that it be self-service rather than having to go and ask what's effectively a human keyboard to do something for you so, for, for example, I run Simpa at work, and uh, Simpa you can tie into LDAP and the creation of scripts, or sorry, uh, the scripts to create lists and uh, purge lists are easy to make, and you could hook that into an environment where the act of creating a new SCM repository triggers the creation of a couple of project lists. So there's lots of ways of accomplishing it, but that's the conversation that I'd like to see happen is is Alioth does these 10 things. We only really need seven of, seven of them. GitLab does four. How do we do the other three? Um, did you ever think about moving to a sort of more self-service kind of model for people running services? So like, you have a cloud, somebody presents their service requirement to you and then you decide it's okay and gives them like cloud credentials so that they can run their own service or something like that. Because it seems like sort of the DSA is more actively involved. No, I, don't, I don't run a service, like I've, I've never proposed to run a service myself, but this is how it sort of feels. It's like an outside team member or an outside team member. I, I tried to set that up in the last two to three years, but I was actually lacking in time on that um, and had, um, also security problems 
um, with some of those services not properly talking SSL to each other. So uh, in the end, um, I stopped working on that. Um, maybe if, if we find time or if we find a team to help us with that there, we could try to redo that. I'm open to that. Are you talking about OpenStack there? Okay. With uh, respect to hardware, I think we really, really should thank um, HPE um, for the very huge donation we are currently getting from both the server, uh, the servers that were provided last year, which we mainly used for um, re placing our security Debian.org infrastructure and on the huge den upcoming donation for the blade center and the storage shelves and the switches and so on what's coming uh, which will be probably shipped the next weeks after DebConf to Lucas place and then Lucas setting that up yeah and there'll be there'll be a public uh, press release for that um, so we're waiting for that second shipment of hardware to arrive at UBC before we issue that press release. And hopefully HPE will also issue their own press release. I think it's very good news. They've supported both this conference and uh, uh, DSA over the last two years in terms of the hardware. So it's a great relationship. Because the Because this, this donation more or less doubles the CPU power we use for services at the moment. So that's a really huge donation. You guys already mentioned uh, Elios and List Masters are teams that need more people. Are there other services running on Debian.org that need more people to help? <laughs> There are very, very few teams which actually turn down offers of help. So even though the owner of bugs might not actively be soliciting uh, for help, I'm fairly sure that if somebody shows up, they would be happy to have more people help out. So, um, as someone running a few servers on Debian host like uh, auto builders, I'm happy for people who like to join. And I think the same is true for all the teams that run things on Debian. If somebody wants to join, can join, can actually make things better, we are, I think most of the core teams are very happy if people join because beyond all of them, what's there, lists, auto builders, there's just most of the same people. So if I look now at who is standing there, um, who was in the committee, who was in the release team, who was running auto builders, there might be some quite of some uh, overlap. And it usually works the same for all groups. If you send patches often enough, um, even, for D even for DSA, um, you might get just the correct uh, uh, um, GID assigned and then just work on your own. That's what, what we, for example, did with Paul two years ago. Yeah, just to reply your question, there uh, came to mind a couple of ser services like Pass Tracker, Debian.org, that we have to shut down because there was lack of, of maintainer. And HTTP Redeer, which is currently used is uh, we we really need someone to if we want to keep it live we need someone to maintain that service not really a question i mean w when i said that not that i i don't know that everyone wants patches it's just that uh, maybe we should be more proactive and let people know ex explicitly that uh, the teams need people to do specific stuff and, and publicize that, use the communication channels to make people aware that there's other ways to help Debian that really need them right now besides packaging and other stuff. I, I've said this at a couple of other ad hoc conversations around how I don't want to become the, the DSA process guy. 
but um, <laughs> but I, but I am. Um, uh, but maybe we need the same kind of thing that we do for packages for services. You know, re intent to package or intent intent for service, request for help, orphan. So that way it becomes much clearer and transparent to people that you know what they want to build, why they want to build it, who's running it. We do have um, some space in the wiki where people are um, asked to keep information about their service. Um, a uh, small description, but also uh, a way of contacting them should there be an, uh, a need arise, because even that stuff gets gets stale. So if you formalize it a little bit more, I agree with you that that would be helpful. I've been working on lately is we got an offer to host servers at the commercial internet exchange, um, which also means that we then would probably run our own AS and run BGP on our own. I'm working on, on the technical details um, that might help us to get redundancy with one other currently also already operating um, um, uh, hosting location, so we actually have then the more or less the same hardware in uh, in two hosting locations quite close to each other um, and then getting more re even more redundancy um, with this hosting location um, I'm guessing that the DSA is not maybe not the right team to ask but uh, I was wondering about uh, the the bike shed surface is there uh, anything going on on your side or more appropriate to ask another team later this Depcom you'll have to ask the FTP master team for that uh, and they uh, yeah it, it's basically being run by them and they'll obviously have to talk to the the to one of the old folks and so on but it's so far at least it hasn't there there's nothing for us to do on it so uh, that said i would absolutely love to have bike sheds happening you know before i die of old age <laughs> mentioned http with dear what's the current state of things regarding neuros cdns and http with dear uh, right now, we have an experimental service called dev.debian.org, which I'm going to speak about on Thursday. Uh, it's out there, it's running. We use it for significant parts of the Debian.org infrastructure, and it seems to be working well. Um, HP, HTTP Reader, uh, as mentioned, lacks a service owner. It lacks somebody to actually maintain it over time. Uh, preferably a, a team of some size. Um, so exactly what we're going to do with it, I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's quite clear we can't have services that run for ages without anybody actually maintaining them. Uh, at some point, they, get, they, don't, they stop working, they because get security problems. Because what's happening is that DSA is getting uh, the requests, be why am I getting these uh, service errors on, on this HTTP reader service, which we actually do not run. It's just running under uh, DSA controlled, uh, on DSA controlled hardware, but it's not us running that service. Debian.net uses a CDN yes. and you can get Sorry, sorry, .org, and it gets, um, it provides both the Debian archive and the security archive. And the debug archive. And the debug archive. And, and ports. ports. And ports. So it's actually the most complete mirror you can have. And from a redundancy perspective, we have two CDN providers that we can leverage, although we've configured this only on one, yep. but we'll configure it on the other one as well. Is it going to deprecate HTTP Reader? Yeah, it could it could deprecate HTTP Reader. So then we don't need anyone to maintain it. We can no. just drop it. 
No, but if somebody were to step forward and want to continue running HTTP Reader, that would be good. But I think then we, then we get back to the Alioth versus GitLab conversation. This is actually simpler because the services are much smaller and simpler. So it's the, 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 the main reason we don't want Alioth and GitLab is that they're both pretty big services. If somebody wants to run two minor services which compete with each other, that's fine. I don't really consider that a problem. I consider it a problem once they get to a big size they want, they start competing for, for namespace such as uh, Git Debian old, for instance. Then we need, to, we need to work out that somehow. And, but if you have some minor thing, then that's fine. The CDN, uh, well, I think it's a great idea. Doesn't that make us rely too much on a third party? Because I guess that the bill is like free for us now, but I guess if we have to pay for the bandwidth for security.evian.org will be like a lot of money. Absolutely concern, and it's why we have multiple CDN partners, and to a large extent CDNs are are or are becoming a commodity. So it's as, as long as you don't integrate too much with the CD, with, with the chosen CDN partner, then it's fairly easy to switch to another one. Um, but yes, it's a concern and it's one of the reasons why we still have also have the Mara network and you know having multiple options here is fine. Um, that said, our, our current partner for this is heavily invested into supporting open source and they host uh, PyPy, that you know, sorry, PyPy, Python org, and uh, CPAN, and various other free software archives as well. So, you know, they're built on free software, even though the actual platform isn't free as such. Just ask the names of these CDNs. Yeah, uh, one is Fastly and the other one is Max CDN, both of whom are active in supporting the open source community. And we had a third uh, that we stood up for a tiny bit for a test. We just didn't continue, but uh, we could continue with the third. So we're believers in redundancy, not only in the hardware and the hosting partners for the hardware that we run the services, our own services on, we're believers in the redundancy of the of third party services to be redundant in our um, so, for example, CDN or DNS, secondary DNS, we have multiple partners for both of those services. Well, is that we have, uh, we no longer run the primary services for DNS ourselves. We move that to uh, to commercial hosting, which we're getting donated for free, uh, which is working quite well. Anything that you as developers expect from DSA to, to happen in the next year? So we could just go back to sleep and... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it.